Let's ultrasound! On today's edition of General Ultrasound, we're diving into some sonographer worksheet examples. Okay, time to look at some example worksheets. So first we're gonna look at a good sonographer worksheet. So we have all of the patient data included and the indication for exam is right upper quadrant pain, intermittent, after eating, times six weeks, and nausea and vomiting. And you note that this is short and not wordy and uses sonographer shorthand. And also I've indicated on here that there's no prior exams. And then as we move down the sheet, anything that's normal, the checkbox gets marked rather than writing out in words what is normal. This keeps the sonographer worksheet cleaner and ensures that it doesn't get too busy. Another important element to include is to describe any regions that were not completely evaluated on the ultrasound and the reason why they were not completely visualized. And you want to ensure that when you do run across pathology that you're using correct sonographer terminology to characterize your findings. Example, you want to use the word anechoic rather than the word black. And you want to describe rather than diagnosing. Now there's some common things like gallstones and simple cyst, in which case it is okay to use a diagnostic term rather than a characterizing term. In this example, in the comments for the abnormal findings, it says multiple gallstones, the largest measuring 0.8 centimeters, thickened gallbladder wall with anechoic fluid near the wall measuring, and note that it's measured in three dimensions, and then question pericholecystic fluid, and then patient NPO times 10 hours. So for my diagnosis, I'm questioning whether or not it's pericholecystic fluid next to the gallbladder wall, even though that's the most likely diagnosis. And then I'm also including another little piece of information that's very helpful to the radiologist. Since this gallbladder wall is thickened, it's crucial for the radiologist to know when the patient last ate. And then at the end of this exam, I'm ensuring that I'm carrying down that relevant information into the notes section. And for this section, I write thickened gallbladder wall, positive Murphy sign, question pericholecystic fluid near the gallbladder wall, and gallstones. As a final check, I also want to ensure that all measurements, both normal and abnormal, and all volumes have been calculated, and that all normal findings have been indicated via check marks on the sheet. And then it's also crucial to look over your findings and ask yourself, did this exam answer the question of why the patient is there? In this case, the pathology visualized matches the patient's symptoms. And many times our exam findings are gonna match the reason that patient came in. However, it's also important to note that absence of pathology also can answer a patient question in that it's ruling out that type of pathology in that patient, which also answers the question of why is the patient there. All right, it's time to look at what not to do on a patient worksheet. So first let's look at the indication. This one says the patient is experiencing pain that comes and goes after he eats for about six weeks. He's also been having nausea and vomiting and is worried because his third cousin has heart disease. So number one, this is way too wordy. It's not using sonographer shorthand. Right upper quadrant intermittent pain times six weeks would be a much better way of conveying these same findings. And the shorthand form for nausea and vomiting is N slash V. Also, the patient being worried about his third cousin having heart disease is not relevant information. It has no correlation with why the patient is having the abdominal ultrasound. Now let's look at the priors and history section. He has had an echo performed on 62115 at Northwest Hospital, an x-ray of his great toe done at Mercy Outpatient Clinic on 51413, and his father just had an abdominal ultrasound last week. 
Note that none of these are relevant to the exam at hand. An echo has nothing to do with this abdominal ultrasound. An x-ray of his great toe also has nothing to do with this abdominal ultrasound. And his father having an abdominal ultrasound last week has nothing to do with this patient's abdominal ultrasound. Now let's get into the exam findings. For the aorta and IVC, it's marked that it's normal in the checkbox. And then it says the aorta and IVC look normal in caliber and position. The waveforms Doppler are normal. Note that this is all information that does not need to be provided. All of this information is conveyed within that checkbox that says normal. All this is doing is making this sheet extremely busy and making it harder to pick out the parts of this worksheet that are truly important. Now let's look at the pancreas. The pancreas box is marked obscured. The pancreas tail is obscured by gas and the pancreas head, body, and neck look normal with no masses and normal echo texture. The only information that needs to get conveyed here is that the pancreas tail is obscured by gas. Everything else is extra information that is assumed when no abnormal findings are reported. Now let's look at the next section down. The main portal vein demonstrates a patopedal blood flow above the baseline towards the liver on spectral Doppler. The liver is normal in size and echogenicity. All four lobes observed. No liver masses observed. Note that all of this text is redundant. By checking the liver is normal box and the main portal vein is normal box, you've conveyed all of this same information in two check marks in what it took you a paragraph of information to write. Now let's look at the next section down. At the comments, multiple gallstones measuring 0.8 centimeters, 0.6 centimeters, 0.8 centimeters, 0.5 centimeters, 0.4 centimeters, and 0.2 centimeters. Thicken gallbladder wall with anechoic fluid near the wall measuring 1.1 by 0.2 by 3.2 millimeters. Question pericholecystic fluid. Patient ate a cheeseburger and fries times 10 hours ago. So some of this information is great. It's important to convey that there's gallstones and that there's anechoic fluid that we question as pericholecystic fluid. However, it's only necessary to comment on the largest gallstone when there's multiple gallstones. All the rest of the information are redundant measurements that didn't need to be performed. And also, it is crucial to indicate to the radiologist when the patient last ate. However, the radiologist doesn't need to know that it was a cheeseburger and french fries when the patient spent NPO for more than 10 hours. This is irrelevant information. And now we're moving on to the kidney section. Right kidney normal in echogenicity and size. No hydro or stones visualized. Normal blood flow to the kidney. And the comments are identical for the left kidney section. Note that all of this information that's normal could be conveyed simply by filling out the check marks. When the check boxes are filled in and all this information is conveyed, it makes the worksheet too busy and hides the really important abnormal information on the worksheet. And next we're moving on to the spleen section. Splenic volume and size normal, splenic vascularity normal, splenic echogenicity and echo texture normal. Note that all of these normal findings did not need to get written out in text, even though there's no normal checkbox for the spleen. If nothing is written underneath an organ on a worksheet, it is assumed that that organ is normal. So the absence of text, even when there's no normal checkbox to check, indicates that you are visualizing normal and that you would only write in the comment section if you see something abnormal. Now let's look at the notes section. This is the region of the ultrasound worksheet in which all pieces of information that are crucial to the reason for exam are carried down. On this worksheet, it says, aorta and IVC normal in diameter and Doppler pattern, no free fluid observed in any of the four quadrants, right upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left upper quadrant, and left lower quadrant. Gallbladder wall thickened, 
positive Murphy sign, multiple gallstones measuring 0.8 centimeters, 0.6 centimeters, 0.8 centimeters, 0.5 centimeters, 0.4 centimeters, 0.2 centimeters. Hepatopetal flow in main portal vein on spectral Doppler. Right kidney normal in size and echo texture. Right kidney has no visible stones or hydro. Liver echogenicity and echo texture normal. Patient ate a cheeseburger and fries times 10 hours ago. Patient's father had an abdominal ultrasound last week. Spleen size and echogenicity normal. Pancreas tail not observed due to overlying gas. So let's talk about what's correct in this note section and what's not correct. First of all, it's too wordy. There's so much text there that it's really hard to pick out where are the important pieces of information. All the normal information in here should be excluded. You don't need any of it. Number one, because it's filled out up above on your worksheet. And number two, because you have all those handy dandy little check boxes that tell you when things are normal. Additionally, because we spent so much time writing normal down here, we forgot some pieces of information, such as we forgot to indicate that we saw fluid that we think is pericholecystic fluid. This is a crucial element that's missing from our exam highlights. Additionally, another problem with this is that the writer is skipping around. They're jumping from aorta, and then they're on kidney, and then they're on spleen, and now we're back to pancreas, and then we'll do a little gallbladder. There's no rhyme or reason, and jumping around like that is also another way to miss crucial details. Elements of a poor sonographer worksheet are worksheets that are too wordy, that are not in sonographer shorthand. They have no valid reason for exam. There's a relevant prior exam history included. All the relevant exam findings are not carried down to the notes section. In this example, such as pericholecystic fluid, sonographic terminology is not used. There's a focus on the normal instead of the abnormal. Missing measurements. Too many abnormalities are measured, such as when six gallstones were measured rather than just the largest gallstone, volumes not being calculated, irrelevant family history included, and abnormal findings being lost amongst the normal descriptions.